Welcome, everybody. This is Professor Mark, the author and illustrator of The Art of Flash Animation. Of course, besides The Art of Flash Animation, I've also um, done another couple of books, uh, one that'll be coming out pretty soon. So I hope you look forward to that. There'll be more about that on this channel a little bit later. But today, what we're going to look at is how to clean up a rough uh, into a uh, comic book cover. Uh, this, of course, is for one of the classes I'm teaching on computer applications and art. Uh, if someone's just visiting, uh, thank you. I hope you enjoy yourself today. Maybe enough to come back again. I think things I'm going to look at today are, of course, uh, a gradient tool for background colors, uh, blending modes to add color to black and white images. That's probably what most of you are interested in. Uh, using the shape tool for easy word balloons and cool bold titles. So these are all things that you should have for really nice looking comic book cover. And the main thing, of course, that I hope you're doing is a little bit of research show, so you see what one should look like. So I've already got these open. <clears throat> Let's come over here uh, really quick and see what we've got. Of course, the video topic that I just mentioned, the things we'll be covering today. Uh, just a little notes on the side that I made for myself. And a comic book cover, I did a little bit of research uh, over a couple of websites, and this seemed to be the, um, uh, probably the best that I saw it was, uh, looks like you should make it 6.87. That's allowing, as you'll notice here, that's allowing for about a quarter of an inch on all sides to be trimmed off for bleeds. That means if you have part of your image extending beyond like a red or green or whatever part of your image, you need to include that uh, in your estimate. That's, in fact, those numbers are already in there for you. And what that means is you don't want to put anything too important too close to the edge, like a printed area, but you should put something important like the tip of somebody's finger or foot to the edge, because that might actually get cut off. So let's jump on in, which you see that I've done that I've already, um, I've already put in here just sort of a hero person, the all-purpose generic hero for our purposes today. Uh, extend the edges of my image to make sure it matches uh, those specs I mentioned a moment ago. So it says 6.875 by 10.5. So the way we're going to fix that, let me scoot that down so I can still see it even when my um, images come up. There we go. So I can do uh, image size to fix that because that would actually stretch uh, the existing image. What I want to do is go to canvas size and see if that will uh, extend uh, better. Because really all we want to do is sort of, uh, sort of paste on to the edges of our image. So I'm going to go to canvas size. And first of all, I'm going to change this from pixels to inches. It's a lot more straightforward. We see our width is uh, 5.26. That needs to be changed to our number over here, 6.87. And our height, uh-oh, 6.875. And then we're going to make our height uh, make that 10.5, and that should work. Now, canvas extension color, uh, co color, excuse me, uh, at the moment it looks like it's going to be that purple. I don't want that. I just want white. That should be purple. Just means it's going to give us some extra white on all our sides. So let's see what that looks like. Very good. And if we want to move this guy around, we can, uh, although that's a pretty good position, but I think I'm going to move him down a tiny bit. Now, because this is my area, so I can reposition him a little bit, I'm going to cut him and paste him back. And all I did was Command X and Command B. And uh, on the Mac, when I'm saying command, of course, if some of you are working on the most, you probably know. So I'm going to enlarge this. And uh, used to, with earlier versions of Photoshop, you would scale it up without hold it, with holding down the shift key, as a matter of fact, to make sure that you kept it proportional. Nowadays, in the new version, I think 2019 and onward, they've sort of reversed that. So you don't have to hold down shift anymore. It'll just know that you mean for your uh, transformation to be proportional. Again, that was command T or control T if you want to uh, scale up or transform your character. You can also rotate. If you, you see if I float over on the edge, near one of these corners, you got the ability to rotate as well. But uh, I really just want to apply that transformation. Very good. Uh, we got a position about where we want. I'm always really big about, see that open. Of course, you go to window and layers right there, uh, but it's already open. So I'm gonna rename that to, I'll just call that rough sketch. I've got another layer that I'll use in a minute. In fact, I'll back up so we're all uh, and it asked if I wanted to delete it, and I said yes. Uh, worked pretty quick there. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just give him a simple outline. You see we've got hero person, the all-purpose generic hero. Now, there's a lot of stuff normally you might clean up here, but we're going to be, we'll just leave it alone. We're not going to worry too much about this other stuff. Those are just some sort of notes uh, made for myself. Now, I'm zooming in by going Command plus to zoom in or Command minus to zoom out. And um, I'm going to make a new layer, which I'm, I mentioned a moment ago. I'm going to call this line art. I simply double clicked on the name of the layer. And I go to line art to apply, and then uh, hit. I am going over here to my uh, pencil tool, you see right there. And uh, you can, your brush is also hidden here. It's with uh, in Photoshop, most of you probably know. If you see those little triangles in the lower right-hand corner pointing to the tools in your tool menu, that usually means there is a over here on the left. Now, at the moment, I've just got a regular uh, pencil tool. There's all sorts of wonderful pencils uh, that you can uh, choose over here. Let me just show you what the Kyle Ultimate Pencil 
hard looks like. More, more of a, a solid uh, line for this. And that, of course, is, of course, uh, that is um, according to uh, what you would like to do. Um, if you want to change those, you come up here, click on that, uh, the arrow right next to the size of the brush, in this case, the uh, pencil that we're using. Uh, we'll go to hard round pressure size, theoretically. Uh, anyway, that should mean that when we press down, it uh, will give us a thicker line for our purposes today. Today should be, okay, so again, remember that I've got a line art uh, layer that I'm drawing directly on this. I'm just gonna come in here, and, I'm, and this is a H-U-I-O-N, uh, I believe, Huyen, or Huyen, however you wanna pronounce that. I got a little too far over on that side, so I'm gonna just Command Z, of course, that is throw cuts, which means undo. Sometimes it takes more than one try to get that line you want. There we go, that's pretty good. So I'm gonna get those crazy eyebrows up there. Sort of smug look that he's got. Of course, you see, I've got a really simple uh, sort of generic character for this, because I wanted this to move really quickly. Line that you don't like, just Command Z. You also wanna make sure that if you're gonna be filling these in later that you're making all your lines connect. You don't wanna leave gaps in there like I just did here. So you wanna go back and make sure you fill those in because that'll make your work a lot simpler later on. Almost put for this, uh, see up here I called him hero person. I almost put an HP on his school to think that I was uh, trying to do a free commercial for them. Oops, and I'm trying to hold down the space bar. That's what's happening here and I kind of missed but if you hold up, people call it. And that allows you to navigate by simply pulling around on the keyboard. So I'm gonna hold down my space bar. You see it changes to the hand again so I can navigate around. Just a really nice quick way to get around here uh, in Photoshop. So I thought about giving him some boots, but once again, you know, especially if you're thinking about doing animation or comics or whatever, if there's any way to simplify something, probably should. Uh, animation, so if there's any way you can simplify a character Animation. See, I'm just trying to. Uh, I'm trying to make his uh, where his feet are match up a little better. And then I miss that line. There we go. And yeah, I'm bringing it down just a little bit. It looked like his foot was sticking up a little too. You can sort of correct your errors as you go. So that's pretty good. Just a nice little uh, generic image of a superhero. So if I was to hide my rough sketch, which is obviously what we can do later, we get a pretty good idea of how the character looks without the uh, the background in there. Um, I think before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and fill in what I know would be black. In some, uh, some comic books, sometimes what you'll see the anchor do, if you ever look at original uh, pencils by comic book artists, you might see that they'll put a little uh, X in certain areas. And that's just a note to the anchor to remind them that we're going to need to, whoops, that we're going to need to, um, that they will need for you to fill in those areas. And of course, you also want to make sure you're on the right layer. This is a rough sketch layer. You want to make sure you're on your line art layer. So you get that, see, that's one of the reasons we're cleaning up in here. And I missed a spot here because it was closed. So I'm changing back by hitting B to go back to the brush tool. And if you want his pupils to be filled in, you can certainly go and do that. We're gonna make this nice and simple. So this will go well today because I know a lot of my students have a lot to work on, so. Uh, all right, so that looks pretty good. I just wanna make sure I left everything on the proper uh, layer. That's good. So I'm switching back to the mouse just for a moment because it's a little bit easier to get around. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to, to work, uh, I'm gonna put my color on a separate layer because simpler. So over here on my layers tab, under line art, I'm gonna put a layer on top of that. I'm gonna rename that by double clicking and call it color. All right, so I'm just gonna pick some nice simple colors. Now, first of all, my image mode is RGB. So a minute ago when I was preparing this image to show you, uh, it was still in grayscale mode because that's what I had, scale, I had uh, scanned it in at. So you need to make sure before you start moving around a whole lot uh, to make sure that you've if, if you be that's red, green, and blue, that of course is if you are working with uh, the web or video. Now, some would argue that CMYK, because it's print, and we're talking about comics, obviously, which are generally in print, although that's you know becoming a little uh, divided these days, uh, because there are plenty, plenty of comics out there that are delivered working in CMYK mode, regardless of which way you're going, is because uh, in CMYK mode. So it's best to start off in RGB. And then if you like, before you print, then you can switch to CMYK just to be on the safe side. So I'm gonna just wanted to make sure that's all that was about was RGB, so that's good. So I'm just gonna pick a color for this guy. I'm gonna, I'm selecting items on the line art layer, but I'm going to be applying my color on the color layer, and you'll see me do that very shortly. Okay, so I'm gonna hit W, and you see that's a nice shortcut to give me the magic wand tool. Select the guy's face, 
uh, and I'm going to now switch to my color now that I have my selection made. I'm seeing like, you know, one of those uh, smiley faces. I'll make it sort of yellow. Uh, find a sort of a nice yellow in here. And you see what I'm looking out for is you want, you want to stay away from that. If you see that exclamation point show up, uh, that's a color that's bright, whichever direction, until that disappears. And that should be safe. So I'll say, okay. Uh, now, pretty good. Not quite the color. It looks a little sick. Um, so I might go back, undo. And this is why you really want to keep back. And if you don't see your history, go to window history, and it's right there for you. So I'm going to come back up just a bit. There we go. Uh, try to pick something a little less green. I'll get down here a little closer to actual yellow or you know, what we think of as actual yellow, and I'll say okay. And I'm going to fill it again, making sure once again that I'm on the color layer, not the line art layer. That looked pretty well. Now, um, sometimes what you are, might want to be careful about is you want to make sure that you're not getting into those nasty little in-between color pixels. And I'll show you, uh, if I was to try to color on, accidentally on the rough sketch layer, you see what I'm talking about, all those nasty little pixels. That's why we're doing, first of all, cleaning it up with line art. And then secondly, we're putting our color on a different layer altogether. So let me hide the rough sketch again. Uh, that's one way you can do it. Another way I'll do sometimes is uh, I might actually uh, have the, uh, the color. Let me undo that. Because this is, uh, if some of you might be scanning your images in, which is great, uh, but then that might make it a little bit harder uh, to get those in between colors. So what I would do in a case like that, uh, before I filled in my color, let me undo, whoops, pardon me. Let me step back a bit, layer visibility. There we go. Uh, so what I could do, well, I still have my area selected. I could go to select, modify, expand, and I'll just put in like two extra pixels. And see, that's actually gonna go, you don't have any uh, extra areas that don't get, uh, get filled. So while this color is selected, I'm gonna go to edit, fill, and say, okay, with the foreground. Notice it actually choked into some of the color that I might have wanted. It might actually have taken away some of my lines. So uh, a way to get past that, if this is the method you want, I'm gonna deselect just so you can see what I'm doing. And to deselect is Command D. All right, now look here uh, over in the layers area. You see the color there. Uh, I'm gonna change this uh, by default, where it says normal, that's our blending mode. That's, that's how the uh, uh, characters, excuse me, the layers interact with each other. Normal, obviously. Now I'm not losing any of that extra area. So that might be another way you want to do that. There's any number of ways you could do this, but I rather prefer this one, especially if I'm inking by hand, which is my preference. I just like the way uh, the line with variation that you get with a normal additional brush with ink. Any of those are a great way. So since he's got this yellow thing going on, maybe I'll stick with that. Back on my line art layer, I'll change back to W for my magic wand tool. I'll select maybe the gloves. Maybe I'll make those yellow. And once again, using that same method, I'll go to select, modify, expand, two pixels, say OK. And I could either click I'm gonna click on the G right, right here and fill. And I'll sometimes what'll happen if they are connected. Oh, and look at that, I accidentally did that on the line art layer. But now watch what happens if I do it on the color at the same time. That's because on that layer without the line art, they're not connected. I mean, they're, they're not separated, I should say, actually. But uh, so that might actually speed up your process, remembering again that we're, we're coloring on the color layer, not on the line art layer. I'm gonna deselect real quick. Just pick another couple of quick colors. Uh, let's see, I don't think I really wanna go with the Superman thing, fairly pleasing. Maybe I'll go with orange, say okay. Perhaps with a line art layer, I will get the shirt and his uh, trousers and then change to the color layer. Remember to go select, tools is good, say okay. Once again, I'm tapping G to get my fill tool back. Love these shortcuts, fill that in, good. And maybe I'll pick one more color and fill in the remaining with that. Back on the line art layer, I get the K and the H. And what you see what I'm doing is I'm holding down shift while I'm still on the selection and while holding down the option or the alt key on the PC will subtract an area from a selection, okay? Let me get maybe, I don't know, blue, maybe a light blue, but again, that's out of the print range. So I'm gonna bring it down. There we go, it didn't take much. And that didn't work, so, whoops, forgot I'm on the line art layer, bad idea. So I'm gonna go back to color. Should be able to fill in everything pretty much almost just as one, but you see this, because this was surrounded by that orange, that didn't work, so just need one more click there. All right, pretty good. Now, one of the cool, I can do some airbrush. I'll just do a real quick one of those so you can see what that looks like. Maybe I'll put a shadow here underneath his cape. So uh, still on the color layer, hit W. I'll select underneath shift to add to my selection. And I'm gonna change from the, uh, the pencil tool, I'm gonna change that to the brush tool. And up here, I'm clicking on the little arrow so I can see more options. Uh, I'm gonna get a soft round brush. And uh, the cool thing about the brushes now, if your hardness is zero, that means it's soft. If you take that all the way 
to uh, 100, then that means it's now hard. So uh, those brushes, that, that's just how you control the edge of your brush, whether you want it soft like an airbrush or there's a number of ways you can change the size of your brush. But my favorite, oops, I got to get out of that. But my favorite way is to simply hold the uh, tap on the bracket tool, which is just to the, to the right of your, uh, the letter P. The left one will make it smaller, the left bracket smaller, the right bracket gets bigger. So just like that, I'm gonna make this real same color. Let me get a darker color. And all I did is I just clicked on my foreground color that brought up my color picker. And I just went a little bit darker, something like that's fine. Ooh, subtle, so I'm gonna get a smaller brush and maybe do something like that. That's not bad, okay. And that probably needs to be darker, there we go. Like, uh, maybe I'll put a shadow on the orange just a bit, just to add a little bit of depth. Whoops, forgot to hold down shift. There we go. And this time though, I don't wanna, uh, I don't wanna get a blue, I wanna get a slightly darker orange. Almost brown, maybe not quite. Okay, and see I can just, because this is the only area that's selected, it's like painting with almost sort of like a mask, you know? Okay, maybe just a teeny tiny bit under there, or just a very hint on that side. And there we go. Okay, and if you wanted to continue that, I'll hold down W once again, uh, click on the yellows. But maybe this time I'll actually add, uh, maybe for his shadow, I'll actually pick up this orange. So if you hold down the option key, you might remember this from one of my previous lessons, you hold down the option key and it changes to the eyedropper tool. So I can pick up that exact orange there. I wanna see a little airbrush there on that side, a little bit on that side, and just a tiny bit over here, just to make it interesting, okay? So that's not bad for our character, okay? Um, now, if I wanted to move him around, watch what's gonna happen. I'll grab my move tool and then, whoops, rip the color right out of his face. Now, uh, what I need to do, remembering these are on two separate layers, I'm gonna Command Z to undo first of all. But if you wanted to temporarily uh, link a couple of areas to make sure that when you move them, they, they stay together, you can simply, once again, hold down the Shift key. Now, in my Layers tab, I've got Color Active, hold down Shift, down Shift, there's this Link tool, uh, and that'll link the layers together. So now, Magically, if I try to move him around, our comic uh, cover saved at the right size. We already set that up. Let, let me save. I've really gone too far without saving. So I'm going to save that as a hero person. You see, the original was, was a JPEG. Now this is a PSD. Anytime you add, you, you start, it's going to suggest that you save it as a Photoshop document, which is exactly what we want. You want to make sure that layers are checked. It probably will be. So we'll say OK. So, <clears throat> OK. So um, one of the other things that I said I was going to share with you is uh, a gradient. It's sort of plain at the moment. Uh, the gradient tool is really easy to use. I'm going to make a new layer. Use. I'll go ahead just to give myself the freedom and make a new layer, call it gradient. Once again, you just click on that little icon to add layer right now. Here, uh, excuse me, the way the gradient tool works, it's hidden under the paint bucket tool right now. By default, uh, the gradient tool is here. If you've changed some things around, if you don't tell it otherwise, it's going to go from foreground to background color. So let's, of the three most basic, you have your foreground to background color, foreground to train choices you have here. But we'll just look at this very first one today for simplicity. We're going to go from the foreground of the orange because he would seem to sink into that. So I'm going to get something maybe a little different. Maybe I'll get like, a, I don't know, maybe some crazy purple. That's a little too intense. So maybe I'll go down here somewhere. The other side, maybe I will get sort of a lighter blue. I don't want to get too nuts with this. So I'm gonna say, okay, one side of the image to another, making sure I'm on my gradient layer. And probably the reason it's doing that, you see he's sort of lost there, is back to normal. And whoops, I forgot to paint his eyes and his teeth. So let me do that. So I'm gonna get my paint bucket back, which was under gradient. And I'm gonna pick, notice, remember if you click on this uh, icon right here, they'll change your uh, back to the default foreground color black, background color white, but I'm gonna swap them, I want white right now. So on this line art layer, I'm simply going to pop in his eyes and teeth real quick. So I'm gonna call this, let me see here. I'm gonna hide my gradient layer for the moment. I'm gonna put in a title. Uh, oh, let me bring back my rough sketch so I can remember it was hero person. Uh, let me bring that up so we can see it. So hero person, the all purpose generic hero. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start off with just some very basic text. I'll start off with black so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to click up here. My gosh, that's huge. That's way too big. You see, my text is at 368. I'm going to bring that down. And that's a really cool, I should say. It's actually, this is actually uh, trash cinema. It's a really nice, uh, despite the sound of it, it's a really nice uh, font that I like. It comes from a place called blambot.com. Uh, I'm just going to call this one hero person. And what you can do with this, if you want to make it look a little more interesting, I'm just double clicking to highlight the whole thing. And right here, you've got the option to arch or warp your text. The arch is the most common. So you see, you've got several choices here, but I'm going to keep it fairly simple for this demo. I'm going to go with arc, 
and you see what it does. If that's a little bit too much, take it down just a little, make it a little easier to read. It's still kind of cool. Now you can also distort it uh, by bringing it left to the right. You see how that looks sort of like the, the classic, uh, you know, Raiders of the Lost Ark or Who Framed Roger Rabbit, how they had those titles like that. That's kind of cool. So I'll do that. Maybe bring it down just the time to hit Command T. Now I'm gonna, uh, I don't want it to do that. I actually want to distort it slightly. So I'm holding down the Shift key. So I'm only stretching it up just a little bit, make it a little more interesting to read. So there's, there we go, below it, more or less uh, normally. Oh, now see if you click too close, the things you want to edit. So I don't, I need to click a little further down. I'm changing back to my text tool. Go down here somewhere. Uh, the all purpose generic hero. So I'm going to select that by hitting Command A while I'm still inside the text block. I'm going to bring that down by just dragging here. And if you want a slightly different tightened, doing something at least similar. You don't want to get too many crazy, you, you do not want to go crazy with your typefaces. Usually I've heard, but I might, just for our purposes, I think I'm going to stick with the, the same one just to be simple and try to practice what I preach. So here I know a couple other things I want to do. I oh, will add a word balloon too. So I know how I'm going to handle that in just a second. So I'll come back to that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take hero person because I really want to make that more exciting than just plain black and white. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to need to, to change my color as the type. And to do that, you either need to right click if you're on the PC or in my case on the Macintosh, I need to control click on the, the title layers. And I'm looking for this rasterized type. And what that does is that changes what is, essentially you can still edit it as faster piece of artwork, which means that I can now I'm gonna do. Um, while that, I wanna change all these colors at once. I wanna change all of this to black. I'm gonna select my first, the letter H, which is black. I go to select similar. Now you might think, that it's going to select everything in the image, the stack items, or whatever color you pick on that layer. So that's very, very handy for you. Um, maybe now it's on a purple background for that contrast. So while that's grab your eyedropper tool, I have a tendency to grab my, my paint bucket tool, and I'll show you why. Because if you hold down the option key, when you have something like the paint bucket or even your brush eyedropper tool, click so you get the color you want, release, and look at that. You're back at the paint bucket. So let me fill that in, or better yet, save myself some trouble. I'll undo paint bucket foreground color, which we know is yellow, and say, okay, all right, pretty good. But as soon as I like line, it's not going to be very exciting. So I'm going to go ahead, go to edit, stroke, pick, uh, I'll just go and pick black. That's kind of nice. Okay. Um, mm, eight pixels wasn't terribly exciting. I think we wanted a little bolder, so I'll do undo stroke. I'll go back to edit. There, that's a little bit better. Now, uh, another selected, I'm going to grab my airbrush tool again. Remember my uh, little trick I showed you earlier, it's really the same key. Just hold that down, it changes to the eyedropper tool. Click. Notice that it's now my foreground color by the right bracket tool just a bit. There we go, maybe a little more. Okay, and I'll just Command D to deselect. That's pretty good. I like that. Uh, back on and hide my rough sketch. All purpose generic hero is still, it's kind of getting lost. Put that in his word balloon, but I still like that being super thick. So what am I doing that down here? That's one possible solution. And then maybe I'll put a, something behind it so it stands out a little bit more. Maybe I'll go over here uh, to my shapes that are like that one, but I'm going to pick. Um, again, I'm going to pick this yellow, but maybe go a little lighter this time. So I'm just dragging it a bit to the left. Say OK. And I'm going to drag that down about like, so bring that beneath that other one, this generic hero. So I'm going to deselect that. And uh, I think the last thing I wanted to show you, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we've, we've actually jumped a little out of order, but that's OK. I wanted to show you how to make easy word balloons using the shape tool. Now we just use the shape tool. It's down here below your selection tool, the arrow there you see. Just below that is a uh, rectangle, rounded rectangle. And down here you have the custom shape tool. Now this is really nice. Uh, at the moment, I'm already set up, but I need to back up because uh, when I looked at this, when I first loaded the new version of Photoshop, I was dismayed uh, to find out that they had uh, hidden the symbols that I was used to looking for. I, they, they put in a bunch of these newest leaf trees, wild animals, and like another reviewer said, how many times are you gonna need to draw a gorilla? Um, it can happen, but probably not that frequently. So anyway, what you need to do, if you don't see these others, you're really looking for like legacy shapes and more. I've even doubled mine accidentally. But what you want to see to get to that, oops, that's from my other class. Uh, what you want to do, I'll not say that, that's that. Okay, so what you want to do here to get your uh, shape tools, if you don't see them, go to Window, Shapes. And if you want to load these extras that are not in there, Initially, what you need to do is go down to Legacy Shapes and More. If you don't see them there, as I already have them because I've already loaded them, you come up here. I'm right click, well, actually, I'm not even right clicking. I'm just clicking on this uh, sort of submenu sort of thing, those little lines you see there. 
and I come down to legacy, legacy shapes and more. But what you want to look for under legacy shapes and more, you got these arrows, those are really handy. I, I do that a lot in diagrams. But look at this, they've actually got a whole category now for talk bubbles. Now I was too, that was the only one that was in there, which is, which is pretty cool, that, that, was, that was nice. But I really prefer this one over here. And of course, this is all a matter of preference. You see you got a, a thought bubble as I used to refer to them. Uh, but we're gonna go over here with talk nine. That was pretty nice. So I'm gonna go with this one, clicking on it. And you wanna make sure, at the moment I've got the, uh, the marquee tool selected. I wanna come down here and make sure I've got the uh, custom shape selected. And up here you see it's got, now I have options to use uh, the talk bubbles or whatever. Let me come down to talk bubbles. And you see I've already got a lot of those open. So I'm going to select the one I just mentioned, that one right there, which I rather like. And I simply just drag it out like so. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Now it's, uh, it's yellow. I really want it to be white. You can change the color before you pick it, but I'm going to put a stroke on it anyway. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come over here, click on my layers tab. Now I had a little trouble finding this when I tried it earlier, but uh, I found because I was looking under the wrong, before I was trying to find rasterize so that I could change the color and add the stroke. But where that is, I was trying to look for it up here. It's actually, you have to, you have to control click on the Mac or right click on the PC on the title of the layer that you want. And see what I want, I did with the text a minute ago. So I'm gonna rasterize that layer. And in so doing, now I can change the color by simply painting it. I'm gonna flip flop my colors here with this little button. So now I'm painting with white. And I might, I might actually uh, change it a little bit. I'm gonna hit Command T and make it a little larger. And if you want to, remember, hold down shift and you, so it, it can do something like that. I'll position it a little bit better, almost right behind his head. There we go, that's pretty good. I just didn't want it overlapping there. And while this layer is still selected, if you want to rename it, you can. I, I don't like the word uh, bubbles. I usually think of this as thought bubbles. I'm gonna call it that is, or word balloon singular, I should say. Pardon me. All right, and while that's still selected, I go to edit, stroke, just like, just like I did with the text a minute ago. Say okay, whoops, say okay here first. And then I'm gonna go back to eight. I think that worked pretty good. I only want like half of this. So, and I'll say, okay, look at that. There we go. Now we just have to, I'll grab my text tool. And if you want it to, to sort of fill in the area, I'm just gonna drag, click and drag so that I don't have to keep hitting return when I get to the end. And it's still trying to throw that one in. I'll change that font in just a minute. Uh, to the rescue, if I can spell that right. To the rescue. Now you're not gonna see it because it's too big. So I'm hitting Command A to select all changing it from trash cinema to another really blambot.com digital strip. And I'm gonna bring this down just by dragging on it, see. Uh, 17 looks pretty good, I might do 18. Yeah, I like that a little better. Uh, but you see our, um, uh, our text is overlapping. So if you, see, if you have that problem, make sure that you have your character tab up. Now character is actually for your type. Uh, digital strip is great. At the moment, unfortunately, this is on auto letting. And letting is the distance between one line and another, so there we go. That's pretty good. I think I want an exclamation point there. Go, not bad. I still might shrink it a little bit, but I'm gonna hold down shift so I can, I'm cheating a little bit. I think that will work just fine. So hopefully that gave everybody a good idea. And this is still very generic. If I wanted to, I could come back in here, maybe with a rectangle tool and add myself a nice you know, logo for my uh, publishing company and so on. Obviously make that some other color. But any other information you wanted to put over there, uh, what you're gonna to do to get started on your comic book color. So I hope this was helpful. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Please, other uh, lessons and some other projects coming up that I think you will find interesting. Thanks so much for joining everybody. Have a great day.